Stay tuned for Air Gun Detectives. Welcome to a special episode of Air Gun Detectives. I'm your host, JC. Today, we get to take the mystery of how to fill a PCP rifle. You know, in this day and age, PCPs are becoming a lot more popular. So I want to do a video that's going to cover pretty much all aspects of how to fill the various types of PCP rifles. But before we get into that, do me a favor if you hadn't already, hit that subscribe button down there in the corner. It doesn't cost you anything, it's absolutely free. Also check out my website when you have a chance, www.airgundetectives.com. On that site, I got a variety of t-shirts, I've got my hats, I've got the Generation 2 bipods, I've got plenty of those in stock now, which is really good, and I have a very few of the uh, Rex Compact compact scopes left if you guys are interested in those. But anyway, let's get back to the PCPs. I don't know if you guys know that, but the first PCP, and PCP stands for pre-charge pneumatic, okay, pre-charge pneumatic. The very first effective PCP was developed in Europe in the late 1800s. So PCPs have been around for a while, it's just they've really perfected them now. But first, let's talk about the popular PCPs are becoming, those style air rifles are becoming more and more popular. They really are. If you'll notice this year, every air gun manufacturer has some line of a PCP rifle or new ones that are coming out. So it's kind of flooding the market right now. So normally I would do, you know, when I do my reviews on a uh, certain PCP rifle, I really don't show the filling process of it because it's pretty basic. But I figured I would come to you with this video just to cover that in case you are a little unaware or unfamiliar with the process of the PCP rifle. So you've got to remember, a PCP rifle, here's a couple examples right here, and there's a pistol and a rifle. You have to have an outside air source for these. In other words, uh, they're not like a brake barrel where you cock it and it creates, you know, the, the piston in there creates the air that pushes the pellet. Or a CO2, which is, that has your air contained in the canister itself. This, you have to have an outside air source. And there's only three areas that you can get that air. Number one, it's a hand pump. Number two, it's air tanks, like the scuba tanks or carbon fiber tanks, things of that nature. And then you have your electric compressors. And those vary anywhere from a $300 compressor to a $2,000 compressor and everywhere in between. First of all, all PCP rifles, they're going to be filled by one of two um, ways as far as uh, filling probes go. You're either going to have a probe, which looks like this, okay, and that's going to go in this style of pistol. And basically, there's a slot for them right here, I'll show you. And this, P, this probe just slides right in, just like this. Let me get your angle right. And then you connect your air source to that. And that would be, for instance, just like that. And then obviously this is going to be connected, obviously, to your pump, to your scuba tanks, or to your, uh, you know, your hand pump. Anyway, that's how that one works. So this one is what we call a, once again, this is what we call a probe. Okay. Then what's really common now is the foster fittings because they're very, very convenient. If you check out the foster fittings, it's already set up. So you simply just take your air source and connect it. It's as simple as that. That just slides on just like that. And once again, that's how you fill that. So what do these um, PCP rifles they, and pistols have in common? Well. They all have pressure gauges, most of them, the majority. There's some older ones that don't. If you can see that, you've got a pressure gauge that's underneath here. It tells you what your PSI is. And this one is a little different. It has a pressure gauge actually on the front of the gun. And you'll find in various ones. And some, some of the PCP rifles will have two gauges because some of them are regulated. What that means is there's the pressure in the tank, and then there's the regulated pressure that is used to... Um, come out and fire the pellet each time. So the regulated ones put a steady amount of pressure out, where the non-regulated is just, you start at a fill level and they work their way down. And I've covered that in some of my videos. So commonly the fill pressure is anywhere between a 1500 PSI and a 45 PSI. So 300 bar is the max on these PCP guns, which if you think about it, that's a lot of air, 4500 um, PSI. That's per square inch of pressure. So that's a lot of air in some of these guns. But the most common fill levels is right around the 3,000. They have them, you know, 3,000, 3,300, 3,600, and then again, the 4,500. 
So again, you must have an outside air source. So let's cover the various types of outside air, air sources. But before we go into that, did you guys check out this Murata? This has Terry's uh, um, tactical kit on it. Do you see this? This is really cool. Buck rail. Terry sells these conversion kits, even the suppressor on it. He's got the whole setup. But I'll leave you guys a link for that because he's got some really, really cool stuff. He keeps coming out with different stuff. But anyway, let's get back to the uh, PCP on hand. I'm not getting carried away there. Um, let's go ahead and let's first uh, check out the hand pumps. So and you see consider how a PCP, you think about a PCP hand pump. Well, let me cover the hand pump for you. Okay, now you do know you're going to get a little bit of exercise out of this for sure. But these are very affordable, and hey, you can exercise at the same time you're filling your gun. So who doesn't mind doing that, right? Okay. The key on these is, once again, they have a bleeder valve on the back. You'll probably have to set this pump up. You'll probably have to put the gauge on, maybe put the hose on, do something like that. Depends on the manufacturer, but they're all basically the same. And they'll go up to a 4,500 PSI. Just like anything else, it's got a bleeder valve right here on the back. So obviously, you're going to tighten that bleeder valve. Then you're going to hook it up. I'm just going to tip this down just so this doesn't fall over. You're going to hook this up to your PCP gun. Okay, and this here's one with a standard Foster fitting. I love this accessory, just this extension. It just makes life so much easier because when you're dealing with these very short um, air hoses, it, it kind of limits your space. But if you have the little accessory, we just pop this on here just like that. Then we hook this into our pump just like that and we're ready to go okay and as you've guys seen me before pumping these things can be a chore if you especially if you have one that has a larger reservoir or it's a 4500 psi fill it takes a little bit more effort but that's it you set this up you pay attention to this gauge and you just start pumping and you pump until you get to your desired pressure now double check um, the pressure on this gauge as well as on your gun as you're pumping it up but one stroke at a time I also when I'm using a pump any type of pressurized air I like wearing my safety glasses because you only get one set of eyes there's no replacement so protect them at all costs but anyway it's that simple so this just is a physical effort of you just pumping this up depending on the guns gonna depend how much uh, you're gonna need to pump like I said the smaller reservoir guns they're not bad but it's that simple. Can't really explain much more than that. It's kind of like the old bicycle pump days when you're filling up a tire. The only difference is you're filling up your air gun. All right, let's move to the next segment. All right, let's talk about one of the more popular way to fill your PCP guns is with the air tanks. You got your standard scuba tanks, and I say standard, that's your 80 cubic foot uh, tank. And then which run, you can get those, you can pick those up used for around 50 bucks and anywhere from new to about 250. But remember, those are a 3000 PSI fill. So that's the max you're going to be able to fill those tanks is 3,000 PSI. And you need to go to a scuba shop or something of that sort to get those um, filled. Also, they have carbon fiber tanks out now, which are really popular with the heavier uh, PSI fills, the 4,500 PSI fills. Those range, your carbon fiber tanks range anywhere between 400 and 700 bucks to uh, purchase those. And those also, um, those are a 4,500, as I said before, a PSI. But let's cover the scuba tanks right now, which I said, which are good for uh, 3,000 PSI fill. First of all, let's cover the uh, valves on these things. Okay, you've got your, you've got your standard yoke valve, which is uh, similar to this. This is actually what we call a, a combo valve because it's got an insert on the inside and you can remove that insert and then it's a, a DIN valve which is like this. If you'll notice this one, this, this fill valve is actually threaded. So this one threads into here, but this is the same type. That's why these valves are pretty popular because you have the option of either your yoke or your threaded. But let me show you how you set this up. So we take our fill valve and these, these go on this simple. Okay. You're going to set this up just like this. They call, turn it here, just like this. This part goes in here. You crank this piece in the back, all right, and that's it. You got your bleeder valve here and your gauge. Now, once again, when we're going to go fill these, I like, this is the best accessory, and I've showed you guys this, and so we can create a little bit longer hose so we don't have to struggle as much. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook this on. This is our standard foster fitting. So we're hooked on there, right? So we're set. So now we can look at our gauge. 
Once again, safety glasses. Got to wear the safety glasses anytime you're around the high pressure. So we've got our valve here, and what we want to do is we just want to crack this open nice and easy initially. And we're going to watch this creep up. See, it's going up, up, up. Now we're at our 3,000 mark. We're going to go ahead and shut this valve off. Then we're going to hit our bleeder valve. We're going to let the air out that's in the hose. Then we're going to disconnect our hose. That's all there is to it. It's that simple. So we're at our full 3,000 PSI mark and we're ready to go shoot. So as you can see, um, there's some advantages obviously with a scuba tank, especially, uh, or like I said, the carbon fiber tanks, just because you have that air source that's readily available and you know, you can take that out with you in your vehicle, in the field or what have you. So it's a pretty good option. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, now the best for last. This is our last example here, how you can fill your air guns. And this is the Smako, it's the air cool compressor. Here's the best part of this, no oil, no water, and it's compact. This thing is extremely portable. It also runs on 110, 220 for those people outside of the US, and 12 volt. So this actually comes with the little cables here that you can actually hook that up to your vehicle if you're out in the field, which is great. This whole thing weighs a little over 20 pounds, I think about 21 pounds, but this will fill even your high um, PSI PCPs up to the full 4,500 um, PSI pressure, which is fantastic. It also features an auto shutoff. Let me just kind of give you a little walk around on it. So as I said before, you got the cables here that'll go on your 12 volt. You've got your panel here. You've got your selector switch between uh, 12 volt and your 110. You have your stop and your start button. You also have your bleeder valve. And then on the top, we've got our carrying handle. We've got our gauge that you can set the gauge for whatever pressure you want. It's got an auto shut off, which is really nice. And um, also, when you initially get it, you're gonna have to set this up for either 110 or 220. And then once you do that, um, just set and you're good to go. But anyway, this is, uh, this is a pretty cool little compressor. And how efficient is it? Well, it'll fill a 500 cc tank from zero to 300 bar in 12 minutes. That's zero. And honestly, you never, you never start at zero with most of your guns. You'll shoot them usually if they're the regulated ones. And then you go down to that regulated pressure, let's say 1500, 2000 PSI, even some are 2800. You're just going to top it off. So that 12 minutes, cut that in half or less. And that's how it's long it's going to take you to top off this uh, gun. But let's just show you how this works. Okay. It's pretty cool. It comes, um, as you can see, our little foster fittings on the side here comes with the uh, hose here and that just simply just snaps on here just like this it's like you're ready to go just like that and then obviously in the back we're gonna have to put our power source in that but we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna use our uh, extension hose just for filming purposes it gives me some extra uh, room here this does have a filter it takes a little foam filters in here this just unscrews and you can replace them in there so we set this up just like that and we'll come over here, we'll plug this into our rifle. And the reason I'm doing all this ahead of time is because once I turn this on, it's going to be a bit noisy. But honestly, for a compressor, this thing is pretty quiet. Okay, so we're set up here. Safety glasses, as always. Let's get our power source. Let's plug our power source in. Now when I plug this in, you're going to hear a fan that's going to kick on. That's just a minor fan that keeps the works cool until we actually uh, get it rolling. So we plug this in. Okay, so we're all set up. Let's close our uh, bleeder valve and we'll get uh, switch this to our 110 and then hit our power button right there. So let's watch this. There it goes. And there you go, it shut itself off just like that. So, we'll just turn the uh, 
stop button. But anyway, the fan's still going. It's going to cool itself off. That took about three minutes. I sped that up for you guys just so you wouldn't have to suffer through the, the time delay. But that was about three minutes to top that off. So it works really, really well. Okay, let's move on to the next segment. We're going to wrap this up. All right, so we showed you three of the air sources uh, to fill your PCP. We covered the, the hand pumps, the uh, scuba tanks and the air tanks, and then also the electric compressors. Which one is best for you? I hope we help you answer that. That's really up for you to decide based on your shooting needs and your economic status, however. Me personally though, because people ask me that, well, which one do you like the best? I won't leave home without my Smako. I just, I like that word Smako for some reason. No, in all seriousness, I just like it because it's simple and it's compact and I can hook it up to the truck battery when we're out in the field. Max likes that because it's very simple. We like simple. So I definitely would go with this because of versatility and how simple it is. And I don't like to use the hand pump. I've done it before. I've done it many a times. It's just, I don't like spending more effort pumping the gun up than shooting it. So anyway, that's just where I'm at. So I'm going to leave you guys links below for everything that you saw here. And I also, I found a discount code for the Smako. So I'm going to leave that for you as well. I'll have that all in there. And then also don't forget, uh, check out uh, Buckrail. Terry makes these awesome, he just, he makes great suppressors. And then he makes these conversion kits. I just love this on my Marauder. It's a, kind of like a little AR kit, but really cool. But I'll leave a link for you down below on that one as well. But go check it out. Some of the stuff, he, he just comes out with new stuff all the time. Some of it I'm just absolutely amazed at. And you won't be sorry. You really won't. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Air Gun Detectives. Don't forget, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. Until next time, I hope you and your families are all safe, doing well. Take care and God bless.